Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lately, my, uh, my parents have been driving up and down Highway 97 from Vancouver to Prince George in order to help us with the kids, and we've been very grateful for that. This last visit, my dad had to make his way back down in the middle of their visit up here to go for some dental surgery. And then one week later, he had to drive back up. And then one week later, he had to drive back down again. And I can see uh, how tired he is when, when he arrives uh, here, often having to take a day to recover. But I also hear the joy in his voice at getting to drive this, this beautiful chunk of BC. And, and many of you, probably most of you have driven it. Uh, those those snow-covered hills of the north to that dry central interior, passing through the canyon, the Fraser River right there on the side with, uh, with the huge rocks jutting out of it, kind of being squeezed into those tunnels, right, as, you, as it leads you towards hope. And then it kind of just opens up into the Fraser Valley and that beautiful farmland coming to the Portman Bridge and the city on the side, Coquitlam, and towards Mount Seymour and, and Cyprus and the, and the smell of the ocean, that, that smell that uh, those in Rupert just have to walk out their doors to, to experience. We're a little envious of that, I have to say, or I am at least. Um, that north to south travel is beautiful, isn't it? And, and it's also tiring though, because the road, it is windy. It's much different than say Saskatchewan, right? Uh, Vanessa and I used to drive the road from Saskatoon to Vancouver um, when uh, I was in seminary and school out there. And I always appreciated the, the ease of driving those prairie roads. You just kind of aim your car in a direction, you hit cruise control, and, and off you go. For ease of travel and time, you can't beat it. it it's really, it's, it's direct. It's straightforward. It's sort of an A to B type travel without a whole bunch of distractions in between, though there is some beautiful landscape there. So, you know, when I, when I can appreciate John the Baptist's pronouncement that we need to make the paths straight, make the paths straight. In the Isaiah text, it outlines a more detailed plan of how this is to happen. And this will kind of help us Imagine this, in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway, a highway for our God, for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, every mountain shall be sort of made low, and uneven ground, rough places shall be leveled out. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed for all people to see together. Things will be visible. You know, when I think back to that time when, when Isaiah would be writing this, it's a time when travel was both like dangerous and it took a lot of time. I mean, we're so much quicker now, aren't we? I don't imagine that another hill to climb or an unknown dangerous corner was really appreciated at all, perhaps much less than what we might appreciate a beautiful mountain there to, to drive up. It's quite easy, isn't it? When hills on the side of the road can conceal robbers or, or uneven ground means potential injury, they're not welcomed additions to your journey. A straight highway in the desert means quick and safe travel. And you can see all around you. That's, that's driving in Saskatchewan. You can see everything around you. It's open. You know if something is coming at you. It means that whoever is traveling on the highway has a much better chance of, of reaching their destination in one piece and maybe even getting there sooner rather than later. And of course, if we're talking about a highway for our God, who wouldn't want to make sure that happens sooner than later, that God traveling on that high, highway gets to us? Maybe even to, to see God coming from a distance far off, right? to know that the long wait is finally over, that the time is near. Hmm. Now, a Saskatchewan road does this. 
After all, it's said that in Saskatchewan, I mean, you can watch your dog run away for three days. If you've been to Saskatchewan, most of you have, you can almost see the curvature of the earth. You can see God coming a long way off. Now, John the Baptist does something interesting with Isaiah's passage about the, the straight highway. He kind of spiritualizes it for the people's individual lives. Before it was more the community had to make that straight way. Now it becomes a lot about the individual. And we get a sense that from John, that in order for God to come properly to be with us, we need to make our lives a straight path. Hmm. I mean, he goes on, right? We need to repent and we need to turn around. We need to lift up every valley and make every mountain low and level out the, the bumps. Because we can't have bumps, right? Can't have bumps for some reason. Only then will God be able to enter in and, and come to where God needs to go. Apparently, God doesn't do rough patches or steep climbs or slides down a hill or slips on rocks like the rest of us. Somehow we get this image in our minds that plays out in the church all the time, that God needs some red carpet rolled out in a perfectly straight line in order to come into the world and in order to show up in our lives. Yikes. Yikes. This imagery around level places is a slippery slope. I mean, soon we're convincing ourselves that God only shows up when the circumstances are ideal in our lives and around us. Maybe it's, it's only when, you know, or the house is completely spotless and the walkway is shoveled, that's Prince George, shoveled and salted and sanded. Otherwise, does God just pass by to the next more prepared place, the easier road? You see, more honestly and more incarnationally and more physical and down to earth, God with us is Jesus. Oh, I love Jesus. Because Jesus shows up via the most awkward, crooked and bumpy path there is. I mean, he takes this horrible, uncomfortable journey, dangerous and long in his mother's belly to Bethlehem. He, he pops out into his uh, father's potential dirty arms there in the hay and the animal dung. That is not a well-prepared path for, the, for God. And today in the text, he meanders his way out into the wilderness, winding paths where there's this strangely dressed man named John who's ranting and raving. See, the road that Jesus travels to us and the road that we travel with Jesus into eternity is anything but straight. It has a lot of seemingly unnecessary zigzags and detours, right? You know it. It's your life. It has a lot of sharp turns and hidden and dangerous. It isn't a direct path from A to B, though we try everything to make it that, don't we? It has so many seemingly unnecessary delays. It's not straight because Jesus' journey to us and with us is anything but straight. I can't talk about roads and, 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 and not mention one of my favorite drives of all. It's the drive I got to take almost every month when I was on internship in Prince Rupert. It's the drive from Rupert to Terrace, and, and it is not a, a straight road. It can't be because it follows that gorgeous Skeena River. And there along that windy road, that dangerous road, the beauty of waterfall after waterfall cascading down the rocky mountains that line that highway. The seagulls at one point in time coming in by the hundreds and even thousands as they follow those ulican, those little greasy fish. To see the river freeze and then break apart and jut out of 
the water like spires and, and the water hitting your windshield from car wash rock. And the last time I was out in Terrace and a bit past there towards Rupert Fishing, I got to see that totem pole just outside Terrace, the new one set up to honor missing and murdered Indigenous women. A dangerous highway, Highway 16 is. This is not a straight road. And it's not a safe road either, is it? Many of you know people, especially in Rupert, who have, who have died along that road, been in accidents. Many Indigenous women have been, have been taken and murdered along Highway 16. It's not the tripe road that cries out, we're ready for you, God, we made it straight. If that was the case, I'm not sure God would be traveling anywhere near Highway 16, the Highway of Tears. I'm not sure God would be traveling if God needed a straight way up to, to Prince George or out to Rupert. Are those places off God's radar? Are we off God's radar? Of course we aren't. Because Jesus isn't looking for a straight path. He doesn't show up when it's all laid out perfectly. In fact, Jesus meanders endlessly when we'd rather just get to the point already. Jesus delays, and, and, and you know, what do we do? We demand he speed it up because we're tired of waiting. Advent, waiting. Jesus walks down dark and dangerous paths, highways of tears, because that's where God is needed most and God wants to be. And Jesus wanders out into the wilderness to, to meet a man dressed up in a, a glorious costume, <laughs> fabulous. And, and there God, the parent, and the Holy Spirit show up. Your life isn't a straight path, and neither is mine. And it doesn't need to be, because Jesus doesn't care about those things. Jesus cares about you. Wherever you are, whoever you are, that's love. Jesus will travel into the, the darkest of valleys, that, that valley of death in Psalm 23, along the most uneven roads, through any dangerous turn, and up rocky hills with you and to be with you. And so we celebrate that as we wait on our crooked road of life. We celebrate that nothing stands in the way of Jesus and his love for us, his love for you. Amen.